Hello again. I've noticed that all the yellow footprints which were stenciled all over the place in the spring of 2020 are beginning to fade. And I seriously doubt if anybody is ever going to repaint them. It is less than two years since they were spray painted onto pavements and outside shops, but already they're starting to look as outdated and absurd as the old graffiti one occasionally sees still on railway arches, proclaiming that George Davis was innocent, OK. I wonder if people still remember being made to queue up outside supermarkets with security guards ensuring that only a certain number of people entered the shop. I think that a lot of people are feeling embarrassed now about the obedient way in which they put up with this nonsense, especially now that we learn that those devising the rules didn't actually bother to obey them themselves. A result of this is I'm hearing people who I remember clearly at the time were fanatically keen on doing the right thing, now claiming that they thought all along there was something fishy about the whole Covid business. It is not perhaps helping that we are learning more and more about scientists who really thought that the source of the infection was a Chinese laboratory where people had been experimenting with bats and SARS viruses and that somehow a leak had occurred. I'm sure we all know that this scenario, which seemed to many of us the most obvious way that the pandemic might have begun, was dismissed as a mad conspiracy theory, and those talking about it on social media were accused of spreading medical misinformation. It has now come to light that scientists who believed that this was what had happened were persuaded not only to keep their mouths shut, but even to put their names to statements which said that the very idea was ridiculous. This was to avoid ill feeling with China and to preserve international harmony. I have to say that when scientists are so ready to sign statements which they think are untrue, merely to avoid trouble, it does make some people a little suspicious about what else those scientists might be lying about now. It hardly increases our confidence in the pronouncements that they make, especially when we are told that we must follow the science. I think that a lot more people are now catching on to this kind of thing and are also stopping and thinking about the number of deaths and so on which may uh, not have been of COVID, but rather with it. This feeling can only grow, and my guess is that in five years or so, everybody to whom one speaks will be claiming that they were COVID sceptics from the very beginning. In some ways this is funny, but uh, in others anything but... It's like the old story about the little boy who cried wolf. What do you suppose will happen when some crisis arrives in which it really is vital that people follow instructions and do just as they're told by the authorities? Does anybody think that the last couple of years will have increased trust in the government or made it likely that the next time we are told to inconvenience ourselves with a lot of strange precautions, many people will just laugh and regard it as the government up to the same tricks as they were when Covid arrived. Because that's what I suspect will happen. This is of course the danger when we start to grow contemptuous of our leaders and it is even worse in this case because a lot of us have also grown contemptuous of the police who were so swift to join in and enforce the government's plans. I can't be the only one who remembers seeing the police attacking a peaceful meeting of women gathering to mourn the murder of Sarah Everard. Why did the police grab those women and throw them to the ground when they were just standing there quietly remembering a dead woman? Oh, that's right. It was because they were creating a danger to other people because of Covid. When the population loses trust in the government and police, this sets the stage for a very undesirable state of affairs because 
if you're not very careful, it can lead to vigilantes and a breakdown of law and order. So far, the bad consequences of the COVID pandemic in this country seem all to have been produced by the measures taken by the government rather than the disease itself. It is true that some old people and sick people died, but these were usually people who might reasonably have been expected to die anyway, either last year, this year or next year. Looked at over a five or ten year period, there were no more of them than usual. Set against that are things like galloping inflation, increases in national insurance, unprecedented waiting lists for medical treatment and the harm done to the education of an entire generation. I can well understand why many people are now trying to distance themselves from such things and lay all the blame on the government, pretending that they knew all along that things like lockdowns and furlough payments were lousy ideas. <laughs> I think that in the next year or so, we're going to see the history of 2020 and 2021 being entirely rewritten with the general population having been terribly sceptical and suspicious of the whole idea of all those measures in the first place. My memory is very different, but uh, let's see how things develop over the next year or two.